All right, guys, we have question 20 from the chapter 7 of the Hibbler textbook in Dream Mechanics. And we have this rod AB that is fixed to a smooth color D, which slides freely along the vertical guide. And we need to determine the internal normal force, shear force, and bending moment at point C, which is located just to the left of the 60 pound concentrated load. So, as always, we're going to start with the reactions that we have at point D and B. And once we figure that out, we can move on to the free body diagram of this part of the beam. And if we do a section at point C, we should be able to find all the internal forces as well as the bending moment. So let's start with the free body diagram of the whole system. So we're going to have this beam in here, which we have a color at point D, meaning along the y-axis, if we just call our x and y in here, we won't have any force in y-axis because it can't really move in y direction. So we're just going to call one ax. And also we're going to have a moment where we're going to call it ma because the rotation is kind of restricted. So we're going to consider ma. We have 60 pounds force that is applying at point C. And at point B, we have a rocker which means it can move freely in this direction. So we only have a normal force at point B, which we can show it like this. We can call it B, which would be this force in here. And we know this angle right here would be also 30 degrees because we know this angle is 30 degrees. That one's going to be 30 degrees as well. So we have 30 degrees in here. So we have two more forces. One of them is from the distributed load on the left side of the 60 pounds force. And the other one would be on the right side of the 60 pounds force. So I'm going to show the left one with green. So we have this right triangle in here which first of all the force that is applying from this right triangle has to be applied at the centroid of the right triangle which would be somewhere in here which will be one third of this the base we know the base is three so it will be one third of the base or three divided by three one foot and the distance here would be two feet and again it's because of the centroid of the right triangle would be one third of the base to the point C and one two third of the base to point A on the left side. So now that we have the location, we just have to figure out the magnitude. So we know it's 15 pounds per foot. So it's 15 times the base. Basically, that 15 would be our height of this right triangle. So height times the base, three divided by two. And the other way that you can look at this divided by two parties, basically we are having half of a rectangle, which would be this one. So that's why we have divided by two. Okay, so that's going to be our uh, distributed force on the left side of the C. And on the right side, we have another triangle, which I'm showing in red. This one, same scenario, it will be one third. So the centroid would be one third to the left, two third to the right. And we have 1.5 the base, so one third of 1.5 is going to be 0.5 in this side and one on the other side. And if we add them, we get to 1.5 feet that we have. And same scenario for the magnitude of the force 15 times the base is 1.5 here, and we're going to have divided by two. So that's pretty much everything for the free body diagram. All right, so since we are in equilibrium, we're going to use our equilibrium equations in order to find the unknowns that we have in here. If we do sum of all forces in y direction, we should be able to find the b in here. And since b has both x and y component, the y component I showed in here would be this component, which is b cosine of 30 degrees. And since it's upward, it will be positive. We have minus 60 pounds in here and also we have the distributed force or the right triangle on the left which is green so minus 15 times 3 times 1.2 and also we have the red triangle 15 times 
divided by two, and that's going to be everything equals zero. So our mean here would be basically 60 plus 15 times three divided by two plus 15 times 1.5 divided by two divided by cosine of 30 degrees. So our B, let's just calculate the B, 60 plus 15 times three divided by two plus 15 times 1.5 divided by two. It's going to be 93.75 and we're going to divide that by cosine of 30 degrees. That's going to give us 108.25 pounds. So what we are interested in is in our section at point C. We already found B. If we just go with the freeway diagram of this part, it will be faster and we should be able to find all the unknowns instead of moving on to the uh, rest of our equilibrium equation to find AX and MA. So it seems going with the right side of the beam or the rod is actually easier. So let's just draw the freeway diagram for that part. So that's our beam. We figured that our force B that we were trying to find is 108.25 pounds. We have the red force in here 15 times 1.5 divided by 2 pounds we also have the 60 pounds exactly at point c and we have to figure out the normal force at point c a shearing force and bending moment these are the three unknowns that the question is asking so we are in equilibrium again we have same uh, equilibrium equations sum of all forces in x equals zero so the nc minus 108.25 sine of 30 equals zero so our nc would be 108.25 sine of 30.5 so divided by two nc is going to be 54.125 pounds no negative sign that shows that our nc is in the correct direction sum of all forces y equals zero we have the y component of b 108.25 cosine of 30 degrees minus 60 pounds minus 15 times 1.5 divided by 2 minus vc equals zero so vc will be equal to so we're going to have 108.25 cosine of 30 minus 60 minus 15 times 1.5 divided by 2. So our VC would be 22.5 pounds. So again, no negative sign. That's the correct direction for VC. And the last one would be sum of all moments about point C counterclockwise positive. And we assume a counterclockwise moment for the bending moment at point C, which we called it MC. Uh, the 60 pounds is exactly at point C, so it won't make any moment, but we have the moment of the red force, which was the load, the distributed load that we have. The moment is going to be clockwise, so minus 15.1.5 divided by 2. That's the force, and the distance would be what we found in the previous step, 0.5. And for the B, we know the x component won't make any moment it's going to pass through the point c but we have the moment of y component it will be in this direction so the moment is counterclockwise plus 108.25 cosine of 30 is the force and the distance would be the length of the beam in there which was 1.5 feet so times 1.5 And this will be also equal to zero because of the equilibrium. So MC is 15 times 1.5 divided by 2 times 0.5 minus 108.25 cosine of 30 times 1.5. So let's calculate this. 15 times 1.5 divided by 2 times 0.5 and minus 108.25 
cosine of 30 times 1.5. So the moment is going to be minus 135 pound foot. And the negative sign in here shows that the moment is actually in the opposite direction. So the moment will be clockwise and our assumption at the beginning for counterclockwise bending moment at point C was not correct. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this one. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions and you guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.